In this video, we'll take a look at the EcoFlow River Solar Generator. This is a small, lightweight, backup renewable power source that can be useful if the electrical power grid goes down. Before doing a product review on my channel, I always ask myself this question. Is this a product my viewers can actually use? My answer for this particular unit is yes, but let me add a caveat that it is probably a subset of individuals that will find this product useful, namely those that fit into two categories. The first group is individuals that have medical issues and need to keep medicine cold if the power grid were to go down. And the second group is those that want a small, lightweight, renewable power source they can quickly grab and go. It won't power larger power consuming devices, but rather smaller electrical devices they may need to keep operational if they had a bug out like a cell phone, ham radios, or other devices we'll cover more shortly. For these two groups, I think this unit would be a good fit. So having said that, here are the primary items we'll cover in this video. The features of this particular solar generator, whether this unit is right for you, what makes a solar generator so unique, what you realistically can power in an emergency situation with this setup. We'll compare it to other popular solar generators on the market. I'll answer the common question, shouldn't you just build your own? We'll cover issues related to EMPs, and I'll wrap up with my final thoughts on this product. Before we begin, let me give you a full disclosure. This unit was sent to me. I didn't actually buy it. But before I showcase products on my channel, I do a series of tests to make sure it meets certain standards. And this unit performed well for what I envision my subscribers would want to use it for. Again, I'll post a link in the description section below. So let's go ahead and jump in by starting with the features of this unit. Here are the primary specs. The weight comes in at 11 pounds. The battery is lithium ion. It has a capacity of 412 watt hours. It has a maximum output of 500 watts, 200 watts of direct current, and 300 watts of alternating current. To give you an idea of what it can power, here's a few items with typical charge times. It can power a drill 15 times, a cell phone over 30 times, it can run a campsite refrigerator for up to 10 hours, it can keep an LED light on for over 100 hours. It's worth noting that this is a smaller unit, but while it will not necessarily power larger devices, this particular company is coming out with a larger device that will be much more powerful. But if you're fine with something that can power smaller electronic devices, then this would be a good fit for you. Regarding the plugins, you can power 11 devices at the same time. Four USBs, two USBs QC 3.0, two of the Type-C USBs, two direct current six millimeters, two alternating current plugins, and one car port 12 volt. Now this particular case on this unit is water resistant. It can be powered in three different ways, with a wall socket, which typically takes six hours, car lighter around nine hours, and solar panels at about 10 to 15 hours. It can operate in a temperature range between minus four degrees Fahrenheit and up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It is pass-through power capable, meaning you can power devices while charging it. And the lifespan of the battery is 500 cycles at 100%. So the real question is whether this unit is right for you. The short answer is it depends. What are your power requirements? If you need to power larger electronic devices like a full-size refrigerator, washing machine, a coffee machine, or a sump pump, this is not gonna be powerful enough for you. Due to its size, it is limited in what it can do. But for some, this may be powerful enough to power the devices they may need to power at this particular price point. For those that have smaller power requirements in an emergency, namely powering medical or communication devices, which we'll cover in the next point, this might be a good investment for your preps. For others at value mobility, this may be the right balance of weight and power requirements if they're forced to go off grid in a rush and want a renewable power source that is small, lightweight, and easy to carry. So let's cover some devices you'd want to power in an emergency situation that this device can handle. Let's start with the most common requirement, refrigerators. This will be important for those with diabetes or other illnesses requiring medicine to be kept cold. And let me point out that this unit, due to its size, can only power very small refrigerators. Again, you'll need to determine if it is adequate for your needs. Will a small refrigerator this size be enough for you to store things like insulin if the electrical grid goes down for a prolonged period of time? Another very common requirement I hear in the comments section of my videos is the need to keep communication devices like portable ham radios and mobile devices powered up. These can be powered with ease using this particular device. Regarding retrieving important docs on your laptop you may have stored as a PDF, powering a laptop will not be an issue either. Other miscellaneous devices you'll be able to power are power tools, LED lights, rechargeable batteries, vacuum sealer, a 
CPAP machine, which is one of those medical devices that is important for many people. So what makes a solar generator unique? When compared to a gas generator, which is a video I did recently, which I'll post in the cards above, it has a lot of advantages. They include OPSEC. OPSEC in this scenario stands for operational security, which essentially means you're not giving away important information to those around you. When the grid goes down and you've got the only source of power in your neighborhood, you stand a chance of drawing a crowd if you're running a gas generator. It's portable. With this particular solar generator coming in at 11 pounds and the two 50 watt solar panels adding another combined 8.4 pounds, you'll easily be able to carry this around. Plus, they're very small and compact. You have an unlimited fuel source. With the solar generator, you get an unlimited fuel source as long as you have the sun. The other thing I like about this particular unit is it does not stand out. It has kind of a gray man aspect to it. One of the things I like is that it blends in and it doesn't really draw attention to itself. It's not overly bulky and quite honestly, it looks a bit like a fashion accessory when it's all packed up. If you are having to move around with these out in public, it probably wouldn't draw too much attention to itself. So here's a quick demonstration of what I was able to do with this setup. The manufacturer of this solar generator sent me the unit itself, the case, and the two solar panels. These solar panels produce 50 watts of power and weigh 4.2 pounds. They can be folded up and chained together to provide 100 watts of power. Plus you can power small electrical devices like a phone or tablet directly from the panels without needing a solar generator itself. Here's what I was able to charge. A laptop, phone, ham radio, walkie talkies, vacuum sealer, box fan, power tools, LED lights, and rechargeable batteries. So let's look at one of the primary competitions on the market. The most comparable product on the market at this time is a Yeti 400. And we'll do a quick side-by-side -side comparison to see how these two units stack up against each other. And let me start off by saying that they're not an exact comparison, but close enough. So what is the price for just the unit itself? The Yeti comes in at $359, the EcoFlow at $499. The Yeti obviously wins on this price point. As far as watt hours, the Yeti comes in at 400 watt hours and the EcoFlow at 412. There's not really a clear winner here. They're basically the same. Now regarding battery technology, this is the primary difference between the two units. The Yeti uses AGM lead acid battery and the EcoFlow uses a lithium ion. Now, Lithium ion batteries are the current cutting edge battery technology. There's quite a lot of advantages of lithium ion, namely the fact that it weighs significantly less, stores better, and handles power discharges much better to name a few things. As far as being chainable, the Yeti, you can chain it, but the EcoFlow, you cannot. The operating temperature range for the Yeti is 32 degrees to 104 Fahrenheit, and the EcoFlow comes in at minus four Fahrenheit to 140. Regarding being able to replace a battery, with a Yeti, you can replace it since it's a AGM lead acid battery. With the EcoFlow, you cannot replace a battery. So in conclusion, the Yeti has some advantages for sure, but the major downside of the Yeti is that it uses an older battery technology. Again, the cutting edge battery technology at the moment is lithium ion, which the EcoFlow uses, and why it is nearly one third the weight of the Yeti. It has a longer lasting battery life, especially when stored, and can handle low power discharges much better. But on the other hand, it is more expensive and does not have a replaceable battery. Is there a clear winner on this one? For me, I do not want the extra weight when it comes to mobility. I feel like 30 pounds is a bit too much for a small unit, whereas the EcoFlow comes in at 11 pounds. If you're on a tight budget though, the Yeti or other comparable devices using older battery technology might be more in line with what you're looking for as long as you maintain them properly. You have to weigh the pros and cons of each device and determine what are your priorities when it comes to these types of devices. So the question I always get whenever I do videos on solar generators is, isn't it better to just build one yourself? The answer is yes. I think you could definitely build a unit for slightly cheaper, but you may not have the advantage of such a compact setup. Most of the do it yourself Self, solar generators I see online are significantly bigger and they weigh a lot more. Another one of the things that I often see that's missed in the discussion regarding these units is the programming that goes into the unit to control temperature issues. It really comes down to whether you have the time, the tool, the skills to learn how to build something like this. In the future, I plan on doing a video series on this, but for now, having an engineered solar generator like this makes a lot of sense, especially if you want something you know is professionally engineered. So what are the downsides of this product? At the time of this video, lithium ion batteries 
while quite a leap forward in battery technology from previous versions, are still not going to power some of the bigger electronics people have become accustomed to in our current high power use society. The reality is that if the grid went down for an extended period of time, you'd have to learn how to severely cut back to just a basic. With these types of units, you have to set some realistic expectations of what it will and what it will not power. When I look at these types of setups, I see this huge upside of unlimited power that allows you to not have to worry about running out of fuel. As long as you have the sun, you'll be able to power your essential electronics. For me, this is critical. I can't imagine being in a situation where the power goes down and I have no way of powering the electronics I would need. Of course, what discussion about any kind of electrical device would be complete without addressing the biggest concern most preppers are worried about, which is EMPs. If this is a big concern for you, there are products on the market that will help you handle this situation. I have Faraday bags on hand which allow me to store sensitive electrical equipment. Of course, you can build your own Faraday cage as well. There's plenty of videos and how-to videos online that will show you how to do this. Point is that with a little foresight, you can keep a product like this safe from being destroyed should an EMP event occur. So here's my final thoughts. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, while this unit is small, I think for those that are looking for a solar generator setup that is lightweight, compact, and within the range of affordability, this unit could be a great option. I realize that many will point out in the comment section is just not powerful enough for most prepping purposes, but I would respond by saying, well, it depends. If you need to power basic electrical devices and you want a unit that you can easily move with, I think this is a good fit for that target audience. If you set your expectations of what it can power, you'll find this useful. I'd like to get your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share on social media. As always, be safe out there.